morning, people of God. Morning, people of God. Let us uh, all set up, um, get ready for the time of worship. Um, today, I would like to encourage you all to just open up your hearts as we get into a time of worship. Again, as we always say every Sunday, this is your time. Your time to express what you feel about God. If it's thanksgiving, if it's just utter devotion to God, amen. This is the time when you are free to express yourself of all the sections in the service. This is the only time when you get to contribute, amen. So let us give it our all and this is opportunity for God to work in our lives, amen.
when David says, I was so glad when they say unto me, let's go to the house of God. Amen. Amen. I am so grateful to be standing here and sharing the word of God. But you know what? Uh, the, the title that I have, uh, just, uh, you know, I'm going to throw the title and then I give you a background of this title. It says, shh, just do it. You know, I, I think even if I, I'm not able to articulate what I have in my spirit, this title says it all, and I'm sure you are getting something out of it just by looking at that to say, shh, just do it. You know, and um, when I got this message, it was here in the service, because you know, when, when you get the privilege of speaking in front here, you are sort of like ready to receive any, any day. You don't wait for the time when you are going to be sharing. But every day when you wake up, you are listening, you are waiting for God to give you something. So you always have something in your spirit. So I got this word and um, when I got it, it was, you know, when Jesus was at this wedding in Cana in Galilee. And I got the word, you know, like when Mary says, you know what, whatever he tells you, just do it. Amen. So that is the word which I got. But then I was so excited because those who speak know that praying to have the word is not an easy task. It's not like you just pray and you get it. And that's it. You pray, you wait. So when you get the word, it's exciting because you're like, wow, I got it, you know. But then when you start meditating on the word, so I started meditating on the word and thinking about the word, reading, and you know, like looking, researching around the word, and there were more revelations. And then as time went by and my time drew closer uh, of sharing the word, I felt more and more unqualified to share. And uh, because you go through a process when you share the word, you go through the word, the process, and God works through you before you share it to the church. Yeah. So I felt more and more unqualified, and by the time I was really like, okay, it's very close now. <laughs> I, I, I wished like somebody could just take my slot and preach. <laughs> but you know what? I was thinking if I run away. Whether I am sitting there and not uh, sharing, whether I'm sharing, I have to abide by the word of God. Amen. Amen. I have to do what the word of God says. It doesn't matter where you run to. The word of God is the word of God and we have to do the word of God. What the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We thank you that your word is eternal. You say in your word, Father, that everything in this world will pass away, but your word remains forever. Amen. Father, we pray that as we hear your word this morning, that, Lord, we will do what your word says. Amen. Father, that we will act accordingly. That, Lord, we will please you in everything that we do and in all that is around us, to the people that are around us. Father, that we walk according to your will and to your ways. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I welcome you as I speak, yeah. that you use me for your greatness. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. You know, God is a good God. Yes. We live in a generation that knows it all, but does less or nothing. Do you believe that? I, this is, these are the words direct from me. I didn't, refer, I didn't get them from anybody else. When I was observing, I, I looked at our lives. I said, wow, we, we are a generation that knows it all, but we do less or nothing. And we are also a generation that is loaded with information about how to do something. How do you do this? How do you lose weight? Oh, how do you become successful in this? We have got so much information about how to do something, but nothing or less is done. Yeah. There is more talk. Oh, you know what? 
this is what you can do. Oh, if I were you, I would do this. There's more talk, but less or no action. You know, I was, when I was meditating, I said, if only, if only we could do a quarter, just a quarter of what we, what we are supposed to do. Just a quarter. Yeah. No procrastination. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. Just keep quiet and do it. If only we could do a quarter. Yeah. Imagine what your life would be like. Yeah. Imagine what the world where we live would be like. When people wake up in the morning, you are, you are supposed to pray, you read the word of God, but you know what? Do you do it? Oh, maybe not now. Maybe you're feeling tired and stuff like that. Things come your way and you don't do it. But if only we could do a quarter of what we are supposed to do, imagine what your life would be like. Yeah. That's why I said when I was meditating on this word, I looked at my life, I said, if only I can do a quarter, just a quarter of everything that I need to do, I wouldn't be where I am now. I would be somewhere else. But am I doing all that I need to do? That's why I said, you know what, this is a, it's a question that we need to think about, all of us. What is it that you need to do? Some people are studying. You need to study, but what do you do when that time to study comes? What do you do? You say maybe tomorrow, maybe, maybe this evening, maybe another day, procrastination. I will do it. And you don't do it. And when you don't do it, do you know the, 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 the attitude that we have? Most of us, you know, we have an attitude of uh, wanting the results, but no work. We all want good results, but nobody loves to work. Do you know, I, um, I, I exercise. I know some of you may not believe it. I exercise in every morning, uh, Monday to Friday, but I have my cheerleader, my husband, who helps me, motivates me to exercise. So he says, you know what? You are doing well, Mrs. Moyo. You know what? You are going to enjoy the benefits. You, like, and when we talk, it's like, you don't want to reap where you did not sow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not nice when I do it, but after exercise, I feel really good and I feel like it says, well done, Mrs. Boyle. And I feel very good. Yeah. I feel very good about that. I'm not doing much, but I'm doing something. Yeah. I am doing something, but I wish I could do a quarter. Yeah. Just a quarter, it would change my life. If I can do a quarter where whatever thing that I'm doing, if I can only do a quarter, that will change my life. My encouragement to you, church. You know, the word of God is powerful. Yeah. There is a time, you know, there's a time for everything. Yeah. A time for sowing and a time for reaping. Yeah. We cannot expect to reap where we have not sown. Yeah. Amen. Amen, church. That's why the word of God says, go ye therefore and preach the gospel. You have to go out there and reach out. You have to sow a seed in order to reap a harvest. So we have to do something. Amen, church. Amen. In our personal lives, we have to tell ourselves, you know what? We have got the strength. God has given us the strength. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. What can stand on our way if God is on our side? Yes, we can. We can do it. Amen. Amen. If only we can have that attitude of saying, I am able to do far above what I can even think or imagine. Yes, I can. Amen, church. You know, so I was meditating on this scripture, John 2, verse 2. The word of, of God says, The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. I say, Jesus' mother was there. Yeah. And Jesus, Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Amen, church. Amen. You know, when, when I heard this scripture, I know it's a common scripture, isn't it? Yeah. We all know it. But when I thought, what a party. You know, there are some parties where Jesus is not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. People have parties and
saying, Jesus, please, please, Jesus, wait. We are having a party. But look at this party. Jesus is there. Amen. Do you know, we are the children of God. When we have a party, let's invite him in. He is allowed. He is allowed in our party. Amen. You know when we turn 21, you, you know that age when we turn 21, when we turn 18, let's invite Jesus Amen. in. He is allowed in our party. Amen. Amen. But you know our generation is that generation where when we have parties, I don't know, our party is exciting. Yes, they are, aren't they? Yes. Are we allowed to dance in a party? Yes. Yes, are we allowed to sing? Yes. Are we allowed to have fun? Yes. So, why not invite Jesus? Yes. He, is, he also wants to have fun with you. Amen. 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 So, you know what? I, I looked at this and I was like, whoa, Jesus was there having fun. The disciples were there having fun and the mother was there. They were having a good time. Yes. But when I looked at this, um, our, the word which I said dropped in my spirit is whatever he tells you, do it. But the more I meditated on the word, it became bigger than what I thought. Because when I looked at this, I saw this uh, wording representing the church, which is us, the bride of Jesus Christ, and him being the bridegroom. Amen. Amen. So when I looked at that, I was like, wow, we are the bride of Jesus Christ, the church. You are. Amen. Amen. And he is our bridegroom. Amen. And when you look at the wedding, you know, the wedding, you have to dress in a certain way at the wedding. You know, there's a dress that you wear. What kind of dress do you wear? White. The dress is white, which is, uh, it resembles that purity. It is, put, it is clean. It is perfect. It has no spot. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And he is the groom. So when this came, I, I had to look because Jesus uh, is a Jew. So I looked at this wedding because I was thinking, they are having this wedding at what stage? Because the Jewish wedding has, has got all these stages. So I was looking at this when I said, you know, because you invite the closest friends and family. So I was thinking, what stage is this? When is this happening? So in the Jewish wedding, uh, there's a stage where it says, uh, it's called the betrothal, uh, or a betrothal process. Okay, I'm going to just say that briefly. It says the father and the groom, okay, go to the bride's house and knock at the door. They knock at the door, and if she opens the door, it means that she is willing to begin the betrothal process. And this is uh, also, if you look at Revelation 3, verse 20, what does it say? Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open, I will come in and die with you. So now, this is what happens. So if the bride opens, you know, he, she is accepting that the process, this marital process goes on. So as soon as they come into the bride's home, the son will take a sip of wine and pass it to the bride. And if she drinks, it symbolizes the acceptance of him and her willingness for him to continue with the betrothal process. So they, this is going on and on. So I was trying to get to the stage, you know, like where Jesus is. And I'm like, what stage was Jesus on this one? Because they were having fun and something happened here at this wedding. So now they have the wine. So the drinking uh, from this, they drink from the same cup was considered the first kiss and willingness to, uh, to set themselves apart and remain pure. So the boy would drink the wine and give the girl, if the girl drinks from that cup, it means, okay, we are, co we are going further. It's a kiss, or it's just drinking from the same glass, basically. So this process continues. 
So they were also willing to combine their families in one family. Each member will be committed to serving all the members of the family. You know, it's similar to Africa. When you marry into the family, you don't marry one person, you marry the whole family. So they do the same as well, you know, this is what they were doing. So you are accepting and the two families come together, everybody is involved, you know. But after this, they will uh, dine together. So it, it, it's, it's all the stages, it goes on and on and on. And uh, they agree and they, they say very well, the lady covers. I'm not going to say everything, it's very, very long. I would encourage you to read this and get to know, maybe one day we're going to share this because it is so pivotal when you want to know or get the understanding of the bride and the bridegroom and us as a church, where we stand. Amen. Amen. So when I was reading this, I was saying, wow, what stage are we here? And it was talking about all the covering of the, you know, the face that, you know, the bride will cover with the veil. So no wonder why, you know, in the Bible, somebody married the wrong person because they were covered. <laughs> so it, com <laughs> it comes all from, if you read the whole, you know, like Jewish marriage, you see that. But now, let's come back here. I'm pre I was just giving you a context of the Jewish marriage and all that happens. So the wine, they get the, they have the wine, they move to the next stage, they exchange gifts, there's some dance, there's some music, they move to the next stage. So it's all uh, where, where the, the groom, when the bride accepts all these stages, they get to the part which I also found interesting because what happens is the groom will then go to the father's house, his father's house, and he will make an extension. He will make an extension, which is a what? A, a home where he will bring the what? Right. The bride. And now the wedding hasn't happened. They have to keep, still keep separate. So this is where the, the groom builds an extension. And the wedding, it, it takes, the whole process takes about a year. One year. And so at this stage, the, the people will ask the groom, when is the wedding? He says, oh... My father knows. He says, my father knows when the wedding is. Why my father? Because the father will look at the room where the, the extension, is it completed? Is it finished? If the extension is completed, it's finished, that's when the wedding happens. Because then the groom will go and what? And get the bride and bring the bride to this prepared home. Does that ring bells with us as the children of God? That Jesus says, I'm going where? Yeah. To my father. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Do you know when I was looking at this, please read this. It's quite very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. But now let's come back to this uh, wording. So I'm, I was trying to give the background of us, the church, as the bride and our bridegroom, who is Jesus Christ. So the image, uh, the marriage imagery uh, and symbolic representation are used to convey the relationship between Christ and the community of believers who is us. Amen. Amen. His church. And the church includes individuals who have embraced faith in Jesus as their personal redeemer and have received the gift of eternal life. So in this divine union, Christ is embodying the role of the bridegroom who has displayed sacrificial love and affection undertaking the profound decision to designate the church as his cherished bride. Amen, church. Amen. And similar to the customary practice of betrothal, which I was just explaining, but not all of it in biblical eras, okay, where the betrothed couple remain separated until the wedding ceremony. Uh, this is para the parallel is drawn in the church age regarding the separation of Christ, the bridegroom, from his bride, the church, which is us. Amen? Amen. Throughout this betrothal period, it is compulsory for the bride of Christ to fulfill her duty of remaining Faithful to him. Amen. Amen. God is calling us to be what? Faithful. Faithful while we are waiting for his coming. 
echoing the commitment to be committed to him. Amen, church? Amen. And, and, and devotion required from the bride towards her groom as in the ancient times. So, just a background of what is happening here. As the church and Christ himself, we are waiting for Christ to come. Like, you know those ten virgins who were waiting? The five of them, the Bible says, were wise and the five were what? Foolish. We are waiting for his coming. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Have you got your oil in your lamp? Amen. Amen. Are you ready? He is coming back. Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27. It says, when it talks about the bride, which is the bride and the bridegroom, for husbands, this is Paul, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Amen. Amen. He gave up his life for her. He died for, for the church to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Amen. Amen. So John 2, verse 3 to 4. Now we go back to the, to, to the wedding. The wine supply ran out. The wine was very important. It brought joy to the, to the people who had come to celebrate with the bride and the groom. It says the wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother told him, they had no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem. Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. Amen. Amen. He says, my time has not come. But he had heard the word. The wine had run out. Because the wine was important. They needed to enjoy. They needed to have fun. But that was taken away. He said, my time has not come. Remember, while I'm speaking, I want you to be thinking the wedding at Cana and Galilee, whatever he tells you, do it. And also think of the bride and the bridegroom, the church and Jesus Christ himself. So John 2, verse 5 to 8, it says, But his mother told the servants, his mother said, I've told Jesus. Yeah. I know what he can do. Amen. I believe what he can do. Yeah. So now she continues to go to the servants. I've told Jesus, now I go to the servants. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Yes. Amen, church. Amen. He says, do whatever he tells you. Amen. So I'm just, you know, I'm standing here and saying to you, do Whatever Jesus Glory. tells you to do. Amen. Do whatever the word of God says to you. Amen. Amen. Do what God says. Amen. Amen. So his mother says, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. So... Now, you know, I love this. When the mother tells the servants to say, do whatever he tells you. So how many of us are going to act according to the word of God in this house? I said, if only we can do a quarter, yeah. we can change the world. Yes. If only we can move according to the word of God, we can change our lives, our families, our children. Jesus is our redeemer. What are we doing? You know, the Bible says, you know what? If we confess our sins and accept him as our Lord and Savior, yes. we have eternal life. Amen. What are you doing with this Lord of ours? Who is the Savior of the world? Do you believe that he can turn your life around? Do you believe that he can change you? Whatever he says. Do it. Yes. Amen. He gave us, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. What are you going to do with the Word of God? You know, we live by the Word of God. If you know the Word of God, the Bible says, you shall know the truth 
and the, and the truth shall set you free. If you know the word of God, the word of God will make a way for you. Every step that you make standing on the word of God, you are safe. Amen. You know that when you, the Bible says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So we have the word. If you stand on the word of God, if you walk according to the word of God, you are set free, you have direction. There is nothing that can stand against you. Amen. The word of God says, if God is on our side, who can stand against us? Amen. If only we can do a quarter. If only we can listen and do. Amen. Amen. And stop talking. Do you know what? We can do more in the way we act than in the way we talk. Amen. Because when we talk, we spoil it. Amen. We talk more than we do. If only we can do what the word of God says, we can change the world. Amen. Amen. You know, we live, you know, when we live here in this world, we have a relationship with God. And if you have a relationship with somebody, you spend time with them. You spend time with them. How many of you here, or how many of us, thank you, how many of us here take the relationship that we have with God seriously? How many of you do that? I'm asking myself as well. If only we can do a quarter, just a quarter. How many of you, do you know the Bible said, he is the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything there is. He is our creator. If only we can be obedient to his word, if only we can have this relationship with him, we can do great exploits. Amen. 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 So the moment, the time of prayer, when we spend time with God, how much time do you spend with God? Because if only... You can do a quarter that will change your life. Yes. You know, our worship leaders wouldn't really be asking us to worship. Yes. If only yes. we can do a quarter. Yes. I appreciate what you know Trish mentioned in our prayer group, prayer meeting today, pre-prayer. She said, you know what? We don't have to be encouraged. We don't have to be stirred to worship God. Yes. If we have a revelation, blessing mentioned before, if we have a revelation of who our God is, we will worship Him. We will worship Him in and out of season. Wherever you are going through stuff, you will worship Him. You don't worship Him for what you can get out of Him, but you worship Him for who He is. Amen, church. Whether you have or you don't have, John said, you know what? You give and you take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen, church. We, 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 we honor him for who he is. Church, if only we can do, we can be a church that will change our community. A church that will change our city. If only, if only we can do a quarter. The word of, you, we, you know, this relationship with God when we draw closer to him, he draws closer to us. Amen. He loves us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. He loves us unconditionally. Even the Bible says, even while we were still sinners, he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Yeah. He loved us. We didn't do anything. He loved us while we were still sinners. Amen, church. Amen. He loved us. So if only we can just give back by worshiping him. Glory. By saying, God, you are faithful. Amen. You loved me even when I did not care about you. Amen. I love you. Amen. And I am going to worship you as long as I live. You know, guys, this world, everything in this world will pass away. 
I know when I was young, I used to look at, you know, my pastor and I thought he was ancient. I looked at him and I was like, whoa, he's old. And then now when I hear people say, Auntie Princess of Poetry, who? Are you talking to me? Yes. Do you know young people, time flies. Yes. Blessed is the one who is going to hold on the gospel yes. and not look back. Luke 9 verse 62. Blessed is the one who is going to hold on and not look back. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, God is a faithful God. John 2 verse 5 to 8. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, Now dip some out and make it to the and, and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. Amen, church. Amen. This is the exciting bit. Yes. He says, So the servants followed his instructions. Amen. Amen. Do you know yes. our generation? I said we are loaded with information. Oh, like said, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Put the water that the what do you mean? What do you mean, Jesus? We would ask him. We would ask questions. What do you mean? What do you mean? You mean the water? You mean we put the water? What do you mean? But the Bible says, so the servants follow these instructions. Amen. So the church follow these instructions. What do you, what do you mean, pre-prayer? What do you mean? What do you, do you mean? Come all every Sunday. Do you mean? Do you mean we set up here in teas and coffees? What do you mean? What do you mean, Pastor? Do you mean baptism is for every? Do you, what do you mean? We have, we are loaded with information. Yes, right. We have questions. Yeah. If only we can just shh, yeah. just do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it. What does God say? Do it. No. The servants trusted Jesus. I love that. Right. They trusted yeah. Jesus. They had faith. He just take the jars. Take the jars. Put the fill it with water. They obeyed without question. Yeah. Amen, church. Yeah. They obeyed without question. Yeah. What? How amazing is that? The Bible says he loves us unconditionally. We have to obey unconditionally. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's just obedience. Fill the water. After all, you're not the one who's going to turn the water into wine. It's just filling it in. Fill the water. Yeah. If the Bible says pray for the sick, yeah. I'm not the one healing the Lord. I just pray for the sick. Amen. It's just thinking. Just do it. Amen. I'm not the one doing it. I'm not doing it. No pressure. If the Bible says pray for the sick, do the I just do it. Don't come and ask, how come he's not healed? God ask God, he knows. Yes. He is our healer. He is the one who provides. So when we pray for you here, your job is to believe. Just believe. He is able. Believe. Oh, they pray for me. How come I did? No, believe. And walk according to the word. He is able. Walk, you know what? I am healed. Oh, he's able. He can do far beyond what we can do by imagine. Our God is faithful. Amen, church. Just do it. I love it. John 2, verse 9 to 10. It says, when the master of ceremonies tasted the water, that was now wine. Look at the miracle. The water was turned into wine. No complaints. So the water was turned into wine, not knowing the must MC. You know our MC. We have um, MC uh, yesterday. You know, and today, uh, my friends, precious, the MCs, the master of ceremonies, they are getting the wine now. They are receiving the wine. Tasted the water that was now wine, and the MC is like, "Hey, church, I'm here to give you some notices. So now you're tasting the wine, where and uh, no, not knowing." Not knowing where it had come from. Yes. Though, of course, the servants. Yes. You know those ones who didn't question. Yes. The servants. Yes. They knew. Amen. Yes. The servants knew. Yes. They knew. Do you know what? You have, when you don't question, right. you experience a, a, a miracle and you, 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 enjoy, you are enjoying the benefits. Look, they didn't do anything. They just filled the, water, the jars with water. Yeah. They just filled the jars with water. Now they are looking.
that. He has no idea. But these guys who are dealing with Jesus, yeah. they just went, shh, yeah. just do it. Yeah. Now they know. They're like, okay, there's the wine. And then he's taking the wine and testing. And listen to what he says. Not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, because they're dealing with Jesus. He called the bridegroom over. A host, this is him, a host always <coughs> serves the best wine first. He said, then when everyone has had a lot, of, a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. Wow. Whoa! What a miracle! What a miracle! Yeah. When you just keep quiet and do it, yeah. God will show up in style. Yeah. God will show up. He's a mighty yeah. God. He's a mighty warrior. He's a wonder working God. He's able. Yeah. I love it. You know what? I have no pressure praying for people. I have no pressure doing what the word of God says because I am not God. You know what? I'm just doing it. John 2 verse 2. It says, this miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. Amen. Amen. This was the first miracle. You know what? I am so grateful. It says, after the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his, and his disciples. So the miracle has happened. They just did what he... Everyone experienced the power, the miracle, just because of the people who were obedient Amen. to his word. Amen. God is looking for a people who are going to just be quiet and do it. Amen. Try God and see what he can do. Amen. He's able to do anything. In Galatians 3 verse 6, I like this. You know, what do you say when God says, when God speaks to you and says, do something, what do you say yourself? In Galatians 3 verse 6, it says, in the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of, uh, of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. Amen. Amen. Now we all know the story of Abraham. God spoke to him. And he, you know, he said, first God said to him, you are going to be a father of many nations. Yeah. And uh, Abraham and Sarah were waiting for God's promise. It delayed because delaying is not denial. Amen. When God delays, yeah. he is not denying you. You just have to wait. Amen. If he said he will do it, he will do it. Amen. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Yeah. So Abraham received a promise and he waited but you know what? In the middle of their journey, they thought, you know what? We waited for a long time. Ha, ha, ha. And they did it their own way. But God is a faithful God. Yes. He will forgive you. Yes. So God blessed them with Isaac. But the bit that I really want to look at now is when God asks you to do something that is difficult. God says to Abraham, sacrifice your son. Now God has blessed them at an old age with Isaac. The promised son. Amen. Amen. When they have Isaac, God speaks to Abraham and says, Take your son, yes, your only son, and sacrifice him. Yes. And sacrifice him. Huh? We're just too old to have another one. Do you know when you are young, you could say, Oh, no worries, I sacrifice this one, we'll have more. But now you are at an age where you got this one, yes. you were too old, anyways. Now God is taking this one, no chance. But you know what? It takes somebody who is going to say, shh, just do it. Amen. Even when it hurts. Amen, church. Amen. Abraham obeyed God. Amen. Do you know, I like, we used to sing a song. When you sing the song, which talks about how he walked three days with that boy. Do you know the boy would be asking, Dad, Dad, where's the fire? Where's the wood? Where's the sacrifice? And he says, God knows. And you are the sacrifice. The sacrifice is talking to you. You are the sacrifice. And you know what? God is a faithful God. Amen. When he gets to the altar, he... Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Even if it hurts. Even if it hurts. Just do it. Our God is a good God. So Abraham did it. That's why he's written that he's a father of faith. Yes. And guess who we are? We are his children. Yes. What does the 
the word of God says. God says we need to love. What do we do? Shh. Just do it. Amen. Even if it hurts. Even if it hurts, just do it. If the word of God says we need to live according to his word. Sometimes living according to the word can put you in trouble. But shh. Just do it. Amen. Do you know I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. Yes. They were put there. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Just do it. Daniel in the lion's den. Just do it. Just do what the word of God says. Do you know one thing that I love the word of God says? They that trust in God will never be put to shame. Amen. You may look like you are nobody now, but then God, there's going to be a time when God will show up in style and you'll be, you'll be like a Joseph in the palace, not the Joseph in the pit, not the Joseph in the prison, not the Joseph who the brothers wanted to really kill. God will come through for you. Amen, church? Amen. If only we can do a quarter. Do you know when the angel came to Mary? When the angel came to Mary, he says, you are going to have a child and you call him Emmanuel and all that. Do you know I love the response? She says, let it be yes. according to your will. Amen. 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 Let it be. Let it be according to your will. Church, we are in a generation where people have questions. Where people uh, have got justification. You know justification? Yeah. I they do this and things like that. You know, just do it. Just do what the word of God says. Talking, do you know talking is very cheap? I can tell you, church, how to lead a good life, a successful life. I can tell you, church, anything. But to do it is painful. It's very hard. But if only we can do a quarter, a quarter, God will move in this church like never before. God will touch each and every one of you like never before. God will turn your lives around. God will make a way for you. If only you can do it. Amen. Amen. Can I encourage you, church? Amen. Do you know, um, the Peters, the Johns, they were people like us. And we are in a generation where we can make a difference. Yes. And you know what? We can only make a difference if we are obedient to the word of God. Yes. If the word of God says worship, let's worship. Yes. If the word of God says pray, let's pray. Yes. If the word of God says give your tithe, let's just do it. Give your tithe. If your word of God says give your offering, just do it. Yes. We are his. We belong to him. All that we have is his. All who we are belongs to him. Amen, church. Let's stand up and pray. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, God, give us the strength to stand on your word. Give us the strength to walk according to your will and to your ways. Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, you are faithful. Change us, oh God, into who you want us to be. Father, we are here, we are willing. We stand in agreement as a church that, Lord, you move us. Oh, Father, we are willing to break up and move on. In the name of Jesus. In the
the name of Jesus. Open our hearts, open our eyes. Yes, all our steps in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray like Jabez who cried unto you. He said, oh, that you will bless us. Oh, that your hand will be upon us. Oh, that you will extend our territory. That, Father, we will not experience pain or cause any pain. May your will be done in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our community, in our city, and in the world that you have created. Father, we bow down and confess that you are Lord of Lords. You reign eternally. We give you all the praise. If there is anyone amongst us here who has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment. Just do it. He is willing to receive you. He is willing to turn your life around. If you want to recommit because you have lost your way, this is your moment. Just do it. He is faithful. He can change your life right now. Now is the time. Is there anyone, if you want to receive Jesus and you want to recommit, put your hand up. And we'll pray for you. Put your hand up. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord, that we stand on your word. Father, we say we are going to be quiet, but do what your word says. We are going to act according to your word. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen.